Welcome to the Work Trends Podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan Mbiro. Every week I interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And be sure to check out our Work Trends Twitter chat events calendar located at talentculture.com on the podcast page. Welcome to you for being part of the Talent Culture Work Trends community. Today's podcast is sponsored by Tidy, and we are talking about unifying HR systems. For so many decades, HR systems were created to support payroll, benefits admin, and talent management. Well, breaking news, times have changed. And now HR systems are more important than ever before in order to support a company's talent strategy. There are several distinct types of HR systems available, and it might be difficult to determine which one is best for your company right now. I get it. However, there can be no mistake about it. In HR systems, that contribute to a good employee experience are 1.3 times more likely to perform better. So I'm going to welcome in our guest today to help me and you unpack this topic. Kieran Menon is the CEO and co-founder of Tidy, an employee experience solution that connects, unifies, and automates HR processes and technologies for a simplified employee experience. During his 17 plus years of experience in consulting and sales, he has worked across multiple geographies, including Europe, USA, Asia, leading teams at Opera Software, Case Consulting Group, and Technology Holdings. Tidy has transformed EX for leading employer brands across the world, such as Unilever, AB InBev, Swiggy, GenPact, and EXL, to name a few. With that, I am so excited to introduce you here. So welcome. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much. And it's an absolute pleasure being here. Where are you located around the world? I mean, we, we're all remote these days and dispersed. So tell us, where are you calling in from? Oh, I'm actually right now in Bangalore, India. But pre-pandemic, it was um, half my time probably traveling and half my time over here where most of our team is. Excellent. Well, listen, let's dive right into it. We got a lot to uncover. Tell us more about Tidy's work in unifying HR systems. Sure. So Tidy actually started from an onboarding perspective. And uh, what we are doing is we really kind of went out there and reimagined onboarding and redefined what onboarding meant for large enterprises. So while our focus is on you know, employers with above 5,000 plus employees, a lot of systems, multiple geographies. And what Tidy really did was move them from cumbersome week-long processes to quick, simple, and verified onboarding in seconds. So it was fundamentally a shift in thought process a way in which people were managing the onboarding process manually suddenly gets transformed into an automated and yet personalized experience, even when you're talking about scale and across geographies. So whether it was um, a company like Genpact onboarding, maybe about five, six, seven thousand people a, m- a month to Unilever or AB InBev, the idea was that every single individual had a extremely personalized experience. And that's what Tidy enabled through automation and unification. Wow. One word. And you just said Unilever and you just said seconds, right? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. So we we actually have been able to do that where literally with one click of a button, everything happens completely orchestrated by Tidy. Everything from, you know, asset allocation to badging to compliance, all of that just runs automatically once the recruiter or the HRBP kind of clicks on get started with onboarding. What particular examples and use cases have stood out to you in your years of experience? I think, you know, I'll dial back a little bit and also touch upon why we kind of started Tidy. I think the three co-founders, none of us had HR experience. I mean, we're all from three very different fields of work coming from sales, consulting, design, technology. And the one common problem or one common kind of frustration that we had was that while we had the best tools and the best resources to go out and sell and you know market to prospective customers once they become customers have the best data analytics to make sure that they you know continue to be a customer and keep up selling when you looked internally there was a lack of that cohesiveness 
from a data infrastructure perspective. There was a lack of cohesiveness from an experience perspective when you think about you know, your employee experience. And so what we were kind of tasked Uh, or what we tasked ourselves to do was to build this platform, which would kind of bring some of that sales and marketing and the data side of it into the employee experience. And so that's why we kind of started Tidy. And so today, I think what I am really, you know, proud of is that we've been able to bring some of those personalization, segmentation, targeting thought processes that you traditionally would have in customer and marketing processes. Now we've kind of been able to bring that to the HR world, to the people management world, right? So it became a completely immersive experience. And so when we're thinking about use cases, we're thinking about, hey, you know, if uh, Megan's going to get onboarded into a company tomorrow, why should her experience be the same as Kiran? who's probably joining the same company, but in a very different function, maybe in a different, uh, you know, department, maybe at a different level. So why should the experience be cookie cutter? It can no longer be cookie cutter. And that's pretty much what kind of uh, drove us. That's good stuff. And let's talk about recent years. How has technology impacted the way HR is managed? And when I say recent years, oh, the last two years, as an example. Absolutely. I think uh, everything's changed in the last two years. Yeah, I'm like, hmm. (laughs) Big topic. Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, you know, there's been a huge proliferation of multiple apps in the workplace, you know, suddenly post April 2020, all companies globally scoured everywhere to look for different type of applications that could digitize processes, that could automate processes, that could deliver a digital first experience. And you would have had all of those, you know, nice to know words being thrown around everywhere. And there were apps being uh, embraced for all of that. But I think what's really happened is there's been a sudden influx of too many apps and too many systems, which overcomplicates the process. And you could imagine a organization, you know, which has 100,000 people and what they would basically have to deal with when they're thinking about setting up a process with so many different apps. And so I think that's probably one of the big things that's happened over the last two years is technology has impacted HR pretty massively, but also it's brought about a lot of concerns and um, issues and frustration. So it hasn't really been that sweet pill that everyone thought once they pop, everything is going to be great. So I think there is a lot of reality check happening in 2022 as well. And this may be the same conversation that we can just extend, but COVID-19, I mean, what lasting effects is this going to have on HR systems? I think the positive spin of this is that a lot of companies have been forced to um, really reimagine their employee processes and try and do away with manual work. And that's been the positive spin on it is that You know, HR teams in the last two years have struggled to deliver the kind of experience that they were used to because it's no longer possible for me to just walk into my HR's uh, cabin and have a chat with, um, you know, my HR VP or with my CHRO or whoever it may be. So they've had to adapt into a technology first world. And um, I think that's been the positive spin from, from a COVID perspective. And what a positive spin that is. I'm not even asking you another probing question around it. How's that grab you? (laughs) So how do you think, or I'll I'll even do we think for a minute, and thank you out there to the Work Trends community for being such a lively audience for us. I mean, what do you think about the unification of HR systems? How is this affecting business? Is that different from HR? Are we talking all the same stuff here? I think it goes beyond HR, and fundamentally, that's what we've kind of seen. So um, I'll kind of stick to an example that, um, you know, we often see with large enterprises that we work with, and especially from an onboarding perspective. If you think about onboarding, everyone assumes it's an HR problem, but it really isn't. If you look at the breakdown of tasks and processes, maybe about 40 to 45% of it is actually HR. Then there's about 35, 40% of processes which are IT related. Then there's admin and operations and you know financial systems that kind of come into play. So it's really multifunctional when you think of the employee experience, right? Especially from an onboarding perspective. And so I think that is fundamentally one of the big ways in which it has affected business is that when you think about unification, you're no longer suddenly thinking of just HR in isolation, which was the case previously. But now you're starting to say, hey, how do I bring my payroll and my HCM and my, you know, functional apps like Salesforce all together with the kind of data that that delivers 
a 10x experience for my employees across the board. So I think it's a big shift from a business perspective and also ROI suddenly starts getting tracked. And I'll give you an example. We work with companies where day one of an individual joining and getting started is billing day, right? Which means that the moment the person starts, you actually want them to get onto the floor and start becoming productive because that's billing hours in whatever that industry may be. Now, if your onboarding system does not enable them to do that, if your onboarding process does not enable them to do that, you are actually losing revenue when your assets like your laptop and your software is not ready still day five, day 10 in some cases. So I think that has fundamentally mentally changed the way HR thinks about unification. And it's no longer just HR. It's multiple systems and multiple functions that have to come together to make it happen. So what are the drawbacks here to unifying HR systems? Where are we going to be challenged? I think exactly what what I just said, the collaboration part is probably one of the biggest um, challenges. You know, when you think about something like this, um, what I just kind of alluded to IT and financial systems and vendors, you know, background verification vendors, all of them coming together. I think the biggest challenge that we've seen businesses face is the design of that entire process to make it seamless and automate as many of the processes as possible so that you don't have people running around pulling Excel sheets and then consolidating data and then trying to, you know, automate processes from that perspective. So I think one of the biggest challenges that we're kind of seeing across the board is how do I, you know, step back and think about even designing this unified process. So design thinking is, again, a word that's thrown around quite a lot. But what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. Thank you for asking, because I'm like, I'm a little tired of that one. It's like, really? Please help us solve real problems for people. Exactly. Design exactly. thinking. I'm sorry. It just doesn't do that. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a process. We get it. But how do you make our lives as HR professionals? and talent management pros and recruit like how how are we making our lives easier more positive something more simple i mean the other thing is who owns all this yeah it's great to talk about this i mean there's challenges here who who's gonna own all this yeah exactly i mean one of the biggest questions from an ownership perspective is when you're thinking about onboarding who owns asset allocation is it hr or is it it or who is it that kind of owns that. And until you kind of understand and draw up a plan which uh, ticks off all these boxes, it becomes very tough to think about unification. And so I think that's also oftentimes a challenge that everyone wants to kind of um, deploy the latest and the best. You know, you would go and put in a chatbot, but how effective is that chatbot going to be if it does not have all the answers that an individual is potentially going to ask? And you don't have those answers because you haven't thought of it by stepping back and saying what are the questions and you know what are the various processes that are going to be impacted so i think that's for me one of the biggest challenges i see a lot of businesses face and it's natural you have so many things going on on a daily basis it becomes impossible for you to kind of really step back and kind of look at it holistically well i have to ask this question do you think there's going to be more major changes to the way hr is managed in the future or do you feel like we've reached sort of this point of i guess i'll just use the word stability is that even possible i think what's interesting is there's a stability in i think not undermining hr anymore right so i think two years ago hr was always looked at as a support function you know something in the back end it was a cost center but thanks to covid i think this is one of the lasting effects as well is that um, hr is going to be seen a lot more strategic right so um, i think um, from that perspective i think there is global acknowledgement that hr is no longer just a you know support function in the background but it needs to really come to the foreground and be a strategic player and partner to business. But when it comes to technology, I think we're far from, you know, a point of stability. If you just look at my, uh, what I was alluding to earlier, if you look at the customer side, if you look at sales and marketing technology, that has been growing and evolving for years and probably a couple of decades. If you think about HR technology, we've just started. It's about maybe five, seven, maybe if you push it 10 years old, I'm not talking about some of the old legacy systems, but 
really innovation that came about from an HR tech perspective is probably a decade old. And you still have about, you know, a good decade to two decades of innovation in front of you because we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how data could be used, how you could potentially automate verification systems, how you could potentially automate even career mapping from a data perspective. So I think there's a lot more that needs to be kind of uncovered and uh, developed from a future perspective. Kieran, thank you so much for stopping by today. And I'm going to be honest, my brain kind of hurts, but in a really good way. So thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much, Megan, for having me and, you know, for inviting me to the show as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Work Trends Podcast, your favorite source for all that's new and exciting in the world of work. If you love what we do here, make sure to share our podcast with your friends, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother. Oh, did I forget anybody? And don't forget to tune into our next episode. Catch up with you next time, friends. Thanks for listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. Join us every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for a live Twitter chat with our podcast guest. To learn more about guests featured on today's show, visit the show notes for this episode at talentculture.com and help us spread the word. Subscribe to Work Trends wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating, review, and iTunes. Share Work Trends with your coworkers, your friends. Look forward to it. See you next time.